Boy, I really wish I could fly. I really wish I could climb harder and longer and higher. I really wish I could ride my bike faster and farther uphill. Now you may be asking yourself, what does this have to do with our solar system? Well, cycling and rock climbing and flying are all impacted by the force of gravity, which is also the driving force in our solar system. So let's begin by talking about Sir Isaac Newton, one of the most important scientists of all time. Newton is known for his laws of motion. So we're gonna take a look at his first law. In this law, he says that an object at rest, meaning not moving, stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by a force. Let's take a look at Newton's first law in regards to riding a bike. When you're riding a bike on a flat road, it's relatively easy. Yes, there are forces working against you such as friction, but it's when you turn uphill where you really start to feel a force, the force of gravity working against you. That's because as you're riding uphill, you're riding away from the center of Earth while gravity is pulling directly down toward the center of Earth. When we think of Newton's first law in regard to throwing a ball, as you can see here, when Chandler applies a force to the ball, it flies through the air. It stays high for time, but eventually the force of the throw is overcome by the force of gravity and the ball falls back to Earth. So now let's make the leap to the solar system and how gravity impacts and drives the workings of the planets around the sun. All right, so here I have my tennis ball attached to the end of a piece of fishing line. This tennis ball is gonna represent a planet orbiting around the sun, which is my hand, okay? Now I want you to think, what does the fishing line represent, okay? So as I start to swing it, you will see that the ball orbits around my hand until I let go of the string. And then you fly off in a stra relatively straight line in that direction. One, two, three. When we watch the throw again in slow-mo, you get a better sense of Newton's first law. The fishing line is acting as a force on the ball, which causes it to move in a circular orbit around my hand. When I release the line, the ball flies off in a relatively straight line, just like the law predicts. That is, until the force of gravity acts on the ball and pulls it back toward the ground. So let's bring this all back to the solar system. All objects made of matter exert a gravitational pull on all other objects. The more mass an object has, the stronger its gravitational pull is. So the sun is in charge in our solar system because it's so much more massive than everything else. The gravitational pull acts like that fishing line in the previous clip, holding all of the planets in orbit around the sun. If the sun and its gravitational pull somehow miraculously disappeared, what would happen to the planets? something to think about. Please understand that in this short video, we've just taken a very quick on the surface look at gravity. This is a subject that we could spend weeks on. And as you know, we don't have weeks left in school. In the future, if you take a physics class or an astronomy class, you will likely dig deeper and deeper to get a better understanding of this interesting phenomenon. For those of you that are interested, to wrap up our study of gravity, you may want to complete the following investigation. In this investigation, you wanna find a number of different objects. They could be balls, they could be stuffed animals, they could be your little sister. No, don't do that. They could be a piece of paper, a crumpled up piece of foil. Really anything that will not damage the ground or the floor that you're dropping these items to, onto. In this investigation, what you wanna do is Take two objects at the same time. Hold one in your right hand, hold one in your left hand. 
Hold it in such a way that the object is below your hand when you hold them out to ready to drop. You don't want them sitting on top of your hand. You want your hands palm down holding the objects. At the same time, as close to the same exact time as you can, drop both objects and record which object hits the ground first. It's very important that you drop the objects at exactly the same time. Create a data chart recording whether or not one or the other hits the ground first or if they hit the ground at the same time. Be sure to write a brief description of each object. Was it spherical? Was it a cube? Was it a flat piece of paper? Think about the results and what might have caused the results. Questions that you might have. For Friday's Flipgrid, if you choose to do this activity, go ahead and record yourself doing a few drops and then record your thoughts about your results and any questions you might have about this phenomenon. We will have one more science meeting on Monday to discuss your findings. Have fun, don't hurt anything or anybody, and I'll look forward to seeing your Flipgrids on Friday.